Although The Lord of the Rings belongs to the fantasy genre, magic in this work is not as widespread as in other cycles. Tolkien does not throw fireballs, cast meteor showers, or summon otherworldly demons. There are no in The Lord of the Rings, and some pronounced magical weapons. However, in Middle-earth still met exceptional examples of weapon art, which in addition to everything played a significant role in the events of the world. It is about such weapons that I want to tell you. Morgul blades. These are magical daggers that belong to Nazgul, the main servants of Sauron. Probably they were enchanted by the Dark Lord himself, but it did not give them much power. According to the idea, after death from such a blade, a person should become a ghost serving Sauron. But it did not work in all cases. Frodo was wounded with such a blade, and the wound troubled him for the rest of his life. Elrond healed it, but every year on the anniversary of the wound it reappeared. But Frodo never became a ghost in the end. Another victim of Morgul's blade was Boromir. Not a member of the Fellowship of the Ring, but his long-ago ancestor, Odin Tenth Viceroy of Gondor, in whose honor probably, and named the hero of the Lord of the Rings. That ancient Boromir was wounded by the Wizard King himself, but the Viceroy lived for twelve more years after the wound. In the end, the wound killed him, but he did not turn into a ghost, probably because of his strong spirit, the Sword of Ringle. This sword belonged to a great elven lord of antiquity an elf of the Noldor tribe, Fingolfin. The name of the sword from Elvish translates as Cold Star. And this is not just a beautiful epithet, because the sword Ringle really sparkled with cold light. With this sword, Fingolfin went to battle against the most terrible evil in the history of the Lord of the Rings world, Morgoth, the first Dark Lord and teacher of Sauron. Fingolfin was such a skillful warrior and Ringle such a flawless weapon that the elf managed to wound Morgoth several times. In the end, Fingolfin unfortunately ran out of steam and the Dark Lord defeated him. Before he died, however, the elf managed to stab Ringle into his enemy's leg, a wound that Morgoth was never able to heal, leaving him lame forever, Gron's hammer. And since we remembered Fingolfin's battle with Morgoth, we can't help but talk about the Dark Lord's weapon. It is a giant hammer, according to another version, a club created personally by Morgoth. And Morgoth, as we know, was the greatest of the Valar, including in terms of creation. In contrast to the cold light of Ringle, the Hammer of Grand, on the contrary, exuded flame and smoke after each blow. It was with this hammer that Morgoth eventually crushed the tired Fingolfin, since the battle with the Elven Lord was the only one in which Morgoth fought in person, the Grand was never used again, and many millennia later, Morgoth's apprentice, Sauron, named his giant battering ram after Grand's hammer, with which he tried to smash the gates of Minas Tirith. Drumborleg Axe It is commonly believed that axes are the tools of dwarves, but this axe served the greatest hero of men to or for many years. And when I say greatest, I am not exaggerating. Tuor was the second human to marry an elven woman, and the only human to receive immortality as a gift from Iluvatar. His son Arendil later saved the whole of Middle-earth, and Tuor himself at one time ruled not only his people, but also the Sindar and Noldor elves. I can't remember another such case either. Such a man should have weapons to match. It is not known who created the Drumborleg Axe, but it was definitely the best armorers of that time. Tuor used it to break helmets like a stick and chop armor like a sword. It was with this weapon that he defeated five Balrogs. He also used it to defeat the Orc Chieftain Otrod during Morgoth's attack on the Elven Kingdom of Gondolin. Later, Tuor's descendants took Drumborleg to Numenor, where the weapon was lost during the flooding of the island. 